Previously, on Alicia Rising. What the pissing hell was that? We don't uh, want rips in the veil! But how can you really understand something unless you break it a little bit? And from under the sink I get these big uh, gallon-sized glass brown bottles filled with photo-developing chemicals that I've infused with foresight, the, the mineral that Argonon uses to predict the future. You notice that the burning sensation keeps on growing. You see all of these mental images of people in your minds silhouetted by a great fire that engulfs all of the silhouettes, one in turn, reaching towards you. Well, that hasn't helped much with my stress. Cavern. Hello. The door to your room is booted open and three armed city watch burst into the room. What? We made an appointment. The sergeant says, we've only got a couple of questions to ask you before the truncheon <clears throat> hits you in the head. Welcome to Elysia, the jewel of the north. On our gilded streets, fortune and fame can be found by anyone. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm playing Magpie, an ace of our luck. Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm playing Cavern, a dragon scent slide. Hi, I'm Meg, I'm playing Frida, a wolfkin cutter. Hi, I'm JC, and I'll be playing Algernon, an ace of our spider. Hello, I'm Errol, I am playing Atta, a goblin whisper. And my name is DM Dan. I will be the games master on this adventure. So come on in and marvel at our wonders. Make sure you see the beautiful views we have to offer. And don't mind the ghosts. They're friendly, really. Grab yourselves a seat and make yourselves welcome in the city of Elysia. Welcome back, crew. How do... Lovely. Could, could be better. Could be better. <laughs> Smash cut to Cavern getting punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, in fact, that is exactly what we smashed Great. up to. <laughs> that was a joke, Dan. <laughs> um, it's more of a authoritative slap. Oh, boy. Um, meant to, like, demean and belittle. But... Cavern, you, as you're kind of rocked to the side, you look up at the three city watch that have you cornered and cuffed in the corner of the celestry kind of boudoir room that you've woken up in um, after uh, a much needed night of uh, tantric, debaucherous foot rubs. <laughs> to take your mind off of um, the, the job you've just run. Um, the, the sergeant towers over you um, like a relatively short but portly Lorivar um, with a, a bit of a, a straggly goatee. Um, but he peers down to you, he peers down on you uh, like on the floor um, and he lets out a sigh. Let's try this again. Where were you in the early evening yesterday? So, as uh, an aside, uh, in an interrogation, <laughs> um, you may pay them off with three coin. Or they beat you up and you tell them what they want to know. Is that it? Um, the beating is level two harm. And what they want to know adds three heat. You can resist what? each of those consequences separately. <sighs> I don't have three. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to be resisting a beating. Well, bear in mind, you've got 
uh, I suppose for stat the stash has coin. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, in, in interrogation, so you realise that um, these these watch aren't going to be leaving without something that they're happy to be leaving with. Um, and you've known the guard long enough that the only languages they speak are gold to look the other way or the answers that they want you to tell them. Um, so, yeah, in the and I guess yeah, in this moment, you know, um, well, as as a, the sergeant asks you, where were where were you early evening yesterday? What do you do? Um, I think Cavern's gonna just spit out a bit of blood that's obviously um, accumulated in his mouth from being smacked about a bit. Mm. Um, and say, I've told you fine gentlemen, I've been here all evening and all night. The guard, the sergeant takes in a deep breath and then sort of like lowers to one knee to get down to eye level with you. You know, they say that dragon scents are divine messengers from the gods. And to no one is an auspicious thing indeed. But do you want to know why I like dragon scent? You're so rare. It's really easy to follow leads on them. So, this can go one of two ways. Either you tell us what we want to... Either way, you tell us what we want to know. Perhaps, perhaps we could come to a small arrangement. And uh, he throws an empty coin pouch on the ground between you. Perhaps there is another dragon scent in Alicia that matches your description. I think Cavern is then going to pay the coin. Mm. Okay. I think he's going to... He, he knows how rare dragon scent are and... He also now knows how incredibly of a rare situation happened. Um, and having that sort of heat on the crew would be um, pretty bad for us. So I think he is going to pay the coin and he will try and find a way to pay it back to the crew. Okay. Well... I will, uh, but we'll need to do a flashback to find out how you came to have uh, three coin in your possession. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, just to throw them up in the air, perhaps you swung by Cadwallada Manor on the way to Salisbury to help um, yourself to the piggy jar, or perhaps you've just been forced to hand out a loner. Mm, a loner, that'd be good go with that in which case as you like you slight as you shift to the side with, with your cuffed wrists as best you can to to remove the coin um, that you were lent last night to carry on your um, your activities who was it who lent it to you hmm we might might be easier to ask was it a friend or a rival sorry friend or potential enemy i'm going to say i'm probably going to say it was an enemy i'm going to say it was my rival as a sort of payback to keep myself 
more quiet and not make such an ass of myself. <laughs> I... Okay, okay. If I may be so bold, mm. I'm going Please to do. slightly change the narrative. The sergeant peers at you. The silence deafening uh, in the wake of the question that he's just asked. You know, tell us what we want or get us to look elsewhere. When another voice a, a quite booming, projecting voice rings out from the doorway. I hope I'm not interrupting, gentlemen. And Cavern, through your slightly swollen eye, like your, your puffy cheek, you look up, and in the doorway is a yellow scaled dragon scent. Wearing regalia of the children of Aya. <laughs> and Cavern. Oh, gods. Cavern, what is your... Yeah, where is your head at? When you <laughs> see Dorothea, your old kind of mentor. Um, I think Carif, uh, I think um, Cavern is just gonna... He's gonna be looking down. He's gonna be looking away as much as he possibly can he's feeling quite very very embarrassed about this whole situation and the last person he wants to see him in this situation is her sure um in which case yeah the the three watch um like the three watch stand the sergeant turns around and um i'm sorry this is a an ongoing investigation if you could just and Dorothea strides across the room and with her her index finger and thumb clamps the sergeant's mouth shut like pinches his mouth closed it would seem that I was interrupting something but I think it's time you were on your way gentlemen she says um, and like as the the sergeant who's sh shocked that this dragon sent his man handling him um, like the two other watch go to step forward and you see her like turn her other hands palm up and it begins glowing with white light I would think twice about your next move the watch clearly uh, a bit wary of the spellcaster in front of them look to the sergeant the sergeant <laughs> pulls himself free um, and like sandwiched between two dragon scent just oh, like straightens his jacket and tabard and looks over his shoulder and uh, this isn't the last time we'll see each other Catherine and uh, with a flick of the head he orders the other two watch to leave and you are left alone in the room with Dorothea. And at this point, you are painfully aware that you are wearing nothing but your shirt and pants. Uh, I don't think this is the first time that Dorothea has found Catherine in this situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think he is just going to be looking down like a bit like a scolded child. And just not looking at her and just kind of says like I don't need your help anymore Dorothea like looms over you the like she she's a big dragon sense um, mm. and she through through her sort of like 50 60 years um, on elsewhere she has learned how to use her kind of com her physical presence to aid in her commanding presence, uh, like her physical stature to aid in her commanding presence. Um, and as like her eyes drill into you, like they always do, she will see about that, Catherine. 
and you like she looks around um she tuts like an audible almost dramatic tut a shame and she turns and leaves is Karen still tied up is he still handcuffed Mm. Uh, can you imagine who's just left (laughs) in the room like help (laughs) actually you know what yeah (laughs) yeah they scan (laughs) could could, could you get me out before you go it's like I thought you didn't need my help (laughs) yes in which case no I'm I'm gonna say yeah Dorothea like walks out the room um and you you just you're like oh oh god and you have to like hop <laughs> to get some assistance um to get to get on track record in my pants in your pants in, in your pants yeah yeah Perfect. um but uh yeah you don't seem you you didn't have to have paid the guard but you do kind of get some feeling that um dorothea will somehow be able to use this as kind of leverage on you in the future mm. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, what, where are you heading, what are you doing immediately after you're released? Um, I think once cavern has been released, he is gonna slowly and very, um, remorsefully, um, very coyly make his way back to the manor. Okay. Actually, no, I think he's gonna make his way back to the spectre. Okay. Um, in which case, uh, where do we find Atta in the morning? Oh, in the morning. Mm. Um, like after downtime is finished, fundamentally. Ah, uh, okay. I think they likely did their heat reducing activities fairly late at night. Mm-hmm. Or in in as inconspicuous. Well, there's no day night cycle, but within the least sort of traversed time yeah. of night, I think um, Atta's probably perched at the bar. Somehow has a some kind of mushroom coffee of some <laughs> description. <laughs> description. Yeah. yeah. Is there nothing mushrooms can't do? <laughs> <laughs> the, the wonder food, indeed. Uh, yeah. Just as a side, I was having a little think about the whole day-night cycle, and you know, there wouldn't be a day-night cycle. Um, but I was also thinking about um, lamp lights and whatnot that would be in Elysia. Uh, here's some impromptu world building, um, and it's mm. dawned on me that places of more importance to the faith. So, for example, all of Abbot's Gate and other places like that, like most of Spire Park and rah, 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 rah. effectively the, you know, the nicer parts, um, would most likely have uh, troops of light casters. Because that's a divine light, that, uh, divine magic that is allowed in Elysia. So there would be some parts of the city where the, the kind of white, yellowy, blue kind of light that the clerics are casting... Um, would almost override the purplish hue, and then that turns off, you know, at dusk, if you will. Um, but yeah, so there would be patrols in the morning around places like Abbot's Gate and Spire Park um, of clerics lighting up the place to make it seem like daytime. Um, yeah, it's like Havening, Duskrillen, may well, Havening, maybe, Duskrillen, probably not, Rookridge, definitely not. Um, too dangerous to go into Old Town. Celestry, uh, they turn on their party lights at night. <laughs> um, yeah. The more you know. Sorry, continue, Errol. <laughs> Just, no, that's cool. It's good, good texture. Um, but yeah, Atta's looking bashfully into a cup of coffee. <laughs> Mushroom sure. coffee. Mushroom brew. <laughs> um, okay. Um, sorry, in the spectral of Cab Wallader. Um or somewhere else 
in the spectre if that is open that early for yeah day drinkers morning drinkers <laughs> yeah sure 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 okay um Algonon <clears throat> after your uh all troublesome evening where where did you where did we find you first thing in the morning um so sometimes you find him passed out in the bathroom but I think he'd had an enough of the fumes for one night so he probably did dry himself off and crawl back into uh, the master bed sure okay um in which case um yeah you wake with a start and as you peer out the window um you're met with a very an all too familiar kind of swirling purple miasma filtered through a blue field um and this involuntary part of your mind kind of thanks someone that everything isn't on fire. Um, but yes, as you kind of prepare, your, ready yourself in the morning, um, are you staying put or are you heading to Spectre? Um, I think I'll head to the Spectre and on my way downstairs I uh, pass by this ostentatiously large portrait of my parents that's on the stairwell mm -hmm. uh, with me as the fancy little boy on the knee um, sure. and I sort of I give it my customary little uh, like punch while I pick up the pick up the paint damage it a little bit more every day sure. um, and I and I head out onto the Spectre okay so yeah as you head um, down was through the the southern entrance quote unquote um across the the small canal bridge yeah you make your way to uh the familiar um the, the familiar street with an arch uh that contains the spectre uh magpie mm. are you rendezvousing at the spectre as well sure yeah okay um waking up presumably waking up from home making your excuses <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, presumably uh, waking up at home, uh, making <laughs> your excuses to be out for the day. Yep. Okay, cool. cool. Um, in which case, as uh, as the three of you, uh, Atta, Algonon, Magpie, you make your way to uh, the Spectre. What? Yeah. What is it? Your the three of you. Is there anything in particular the three of you are doing when you arrive? Um, two oh. other mushroom coffees or three other mushroom <laughs> coffees just, just on the side keeping warm okay <laughs> um yeah i go and sit down and take take mine and sort of nod in th in thanks um to atta and peruse uh, this morning's treaties so so, so is cavern not already there Cavern's is that not there not there fair enough there. okay so yeah. In which case, um, Algonon, as you open the treaties, um, well, you, I, I assume you've kind of like grabbed a copy of the treaty, you flicked the coin um, to the, the newspaper, uh, a little newspaper girl who's like, um, what are the treaties, sir? Um, <laughs> and you've kind of had it under your arm as you've made your way to the Spectre, and it's only, you know, once you getting are, are you sitting upstairs or are you going back down into the speakeasy um i think first choice is always downstairs downstairs okay fair enough yeah. in which case as the three of you uh, go downstairs you notice that kevin's not here perhaps he's having a lion um as you kind of perhaps the... he's still swinging from the chandelier <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, as you place the treaties down on the table in front of you and sort of like un unfold it um you you see the headline Sanguivar Dissidents Arrested is the front page headline mm. and you see the mugshots of a number of um Acevar. like to, you know the black and white paper in front of you is very very like you wouldn't really be able to I mean, it'd be impossible to tell the difference between an Ace of R and a Sanguifar, but yeah, there's three Ace of R on the front page, they're mugshots, um, un under the headline, um, 
yeah, uh, Sanglevar dissidents arrested, and you notice that the rightmost is Amringer. Oh, hello. Um, the journal goes, like, the article goes on to talk about how um, through the, like, the dedication and perseverance, perseverance of the watch, these um, these dissidents that have tried to bring kind of civil unrest to the city of Alicia, um, they've been apprehended um, and kind of uh, they've been kind of jailed. Um, you, well, it doesn't have to specify, but they've been sent to Bell Tower. But um, they've been arrested, they've been convicted and charged. Uh, and they've been sentenced to jail. Hmm. And you know, this the watch are continuing their search for, for any uh, anyone else that threatens the sanctity of Elysia. Well our eyes may be red, but at least we do not see the world in black and white. <laughs> um the other the other two mugshots are they people who I recognise? Are they um Maybe his daughters. I know he had two daughters. So interestingly, the da- his two daughters aren't in the mug shots. Um, <laughs> the other two, I mean, they you're like you can't. You know, perhaps once upon a time in the past two years, you might have wandered past them in the street, um, but they are kind of no one of of note. Um, one of them, uh, they they both seem to have been rounded up from uh, the Brookridge slums. Uh, unrelated um cool. but yeah well i was led to believe amringer was a inoffensive and dull man but apparently he's been up to something that's caught the guard attention that's uh piqued my curiosity um eric is sort of like looking over from the bar um and he you notice he also has a copy of the treaties <clears throat> and um you know, the bit that I find funny is how it's only the, the ace of our dissidents that they found. You find it funny? Oh, oh I see. This is more of your graveyard humour. <laughs> yes. He, uh, let, let me rephrase it. I just find it odd that the only ones that they managed to find and charge are the ace of our. And he thought like shakes his head uh, kind of tuts and goes back to what he was doing um, Magpie, Atta, what do you make of this of this headline? Fairly concerned um, Magpie obviously is a bit worried about our very own Eric and Algernon being, <laughs> being rounded up um and also has a friend of her own who is among the Sangravar, as they're, as they're labelled. So I should quickly uh, interject and say, you know, off the back of um, your excursions, your investigations, uh, oh, that yeah. you did very, very well with, um, yeah, over like overhearing um, Musto whittering to himself. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you've picked up quite a number of interesting um, tidbits from around the city. Um, mm. So this treaty's newspaper uh, newspaper article um, seems to kind of correlate with the idea you have that, um, yeah, the City Watch appear to be rounding up Sanguivar. Mm. Um, and, you know, you your minds all immediately go to uh, yesterday when the city watcher are accosting Eric outside this very yeah. establishment. Mm-hmm. Um, you also know, um, and I'm assuming Magpie will be sharing all of her discoveries. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, you also know um, that the chain bearers, um, the so the old kind of merchant guilds of, of yesteryear, um, they appear to be sending group parties out outside the veil in order to bring things they're just sending people out into the veil like search parties 
Um, you remember Musto kind of cackling to himself that none of them made it back. So effectively, they're just sending people out to die. But mm. um, yeah, the train bearers seem to be doing that. Um, you remember him whinging, oh, I got stopped three times in the street by them bloody children of Ire handing out their bloody pamphlets. Um, and it seems like the children are really pushing on, sort of like spreading their word and doctrine through the city. Hmm. Um, you, I mean, it's very, very obvious uh, from the outside, but um, the cob, you, Musto, uh, has, you overheard him lay out his grand plan to expand into Old Town. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's going well, it's going well, yeah, it's going well, it's going well. Um, and perhaps in your uh, your nightly activities at that kind of uh, ball, that kind of gala, the party you had to go to, you, you decided to go to last night, um, you've also overheard um, that, oh, have you heard? There the, 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 well, are all these ghosts above the, the, the shield of Elysia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the shield bearers they're saying it was someone else apparently they're, they're just doing all they can to find out who's causing all the ghosts yeah, they get, they're going after them going after them so it seems like the shield is investigating the attackers investigating the ghosts I should say right does the article say anything about where these, like, what districts these folks were accosted? Where, was it like, are they pinpointing specific so districts? So the, the leftmost and the middle uh, Ace of R um, are listed as Rookridge residents. Um, Amringer, it has his address in Dustry Hill. Um... But yeah, and then it says how um, you know the the like basically their properties, like their homes, have been kind of caught cordoned off, uh, pending investigation from the watch uh, as they try to uncover any other dissidents to um, Marshal Algarve's rule and the protection of Elysia as a whole. One last question: Does it sort of? Is this like generally stuff that's been happening since before Torvian? Uh, Tor I almost got it. Tavarian um, was, <laughs> so, you know. Um, so the the display that you saw yesterday outside the Spectre, um, that's the first time you've seen like the guard like that. There's, you know, there. Uh, amongst some of the population um, there might be a bit of the, there's I, you know, f feelings and emotions towards the Sangravar community tends to be a bit kind of more polarised one way or the other um, but it's usually just kind of been that just a, a difference in opinion so seeing seeing Eric like the, the fact that the guard were coming along and they just wanted Eric to come with them and then they they got spooked when someone started standing up to them and there was a crowd that started to get a bit more kind of agitated and irate and they, ju they just had a bit of a, a leave it mentality um, like something is clearly happening and it involves seemingly um, what you've seen from Eric what you've seen from these three from this newspaper yeah Something's happening about with the Sanguivar community. Algi, do you have a contact at the paper? Uh, well, I met a, a journalist on Remembrance Day. His name was Jamore. Good old Jamory, yep. Um, yes, uh, Jamory was left on a relatively neutral standing with you uh, because you said some nice things and then you critiqued the crossword. Yes. And, the and I'm going to check. I'm going to quickly check this morning's issue to see if they've. Uh, That's another repeat. 
I did this one last year. <laughs> so that be, yes, and the, the, that was it. The the journalistic uh, capabilities of the of the treaties. Uh, yes, I was. I may have been a, a tad frustrated in my own failures to uh, speak to Tavarian and taking it out on the poor uh, journalist. But perhaps uh, I could go and have a word with him. I just wonder where they, whether they were there when they were arrested or whether they were fed this information. Well, it, uh, the article reads with their typical bias towards the authorities. As you ponder this, um, Magpie, what uh, is there anything you're doing this morning, or like any conversations you're wanting to have? Yeah, I guess she would sort of approach Alg Algernon and so sort of say, um, Al "Algernon, can I speak to you about something?" Of course. Um, it's just that I've been thinking a lot about the city and about Tavarian since, you know, and I just, I, it was just so strange that I should bump into her just before she died. And you yourself said that you wish you had spoken to her. And I just, can't help but wish you'd been there because you pick up on so much, don't you? And I feel as if I really didn't make as good use of the situation as I could have done. I just, it would have just been so useful to have had your eyes on her in that moment. Quite. I was, uh, I was hoping to catch her after the speech. I was very moved by her words on sacrifice. But I believe her running into you, though it may have been a coincidence. Coincidence is something that I am very keen to explore and follow up on uh, mm. in my connection to foresight. Mm. Perhaps there's something in your meeting that we could use to convene with her again. What do you think, Atta? You seem to know your way around. What, what do you mean, the Algernon? Ghost. The, the ghost? Well, I was thinking maybe I'd just talk through what, what happened and what, what I observed, but what what do you mean? Well, Atta, we've brought uh, one ghost through into the veil. Is there a way of being a bit more selective? You want me to try again? Yeah? I mean, I'm. Sometimes it feels like I can kind of figure out what they're trying to do, but it's more like picking up a call. and you don't quite know who the caller is. You just, it just happens. But I guess we, we could try and figure it out. Be more precise. Yes, perhaps there we could find a way to identify the callers before they reach us. Tavarian was passed a message by someone about the veil. So she obviously knows more about the future implications. Atta, just as an aside, as you, like, as Algonon asks you this and your mind starts racing about the possibilities of how you might make this happen, um, given that she was only killed, like, less than two days ago, um the chances are like her body will have been uh, will have already been transported to the Osiris Mausoleum in Dustry Hill but she most likely wouldn't have already been interred um, 
there is uh, like you've heard whispers um, that the recently deceased are sometimes used to promote growth for the city's mushrooms. So you've got this like big kind of I can assume Atta's as the sort of person to have this kind of big conspiracy theory that Osiris Mausoleum isn't a kind of graveyard crypt type of place, but in fact is the city's largest mushroom farm. Sorry. And it's fertilized with. We're consuming people mushrooms. <laughs> That's the theory. Right. Okay. So. If you're quick. I you mean. Could. I've never tried to pinpoint and maybe if we had something from her body or were with her body, maybe there's something we could do. Maybe we need to go to the mausoleum and maybe we get some mushroom farmer outfits to <laughs> infiltrate. <laughs> as, as I said, between uh, Magpie and Algonon, are either of you subscribed to this theory that the mausoleum the people the recently deceased are ground up into fertilizer to help grow mushrooms um i like to hope not <laughs> okay that's a good enough answer algonon i think it makes sense to algonon's world view as everything being connected and um <laughs> Like the like coincidences uh, bumping into each other and the person, a person dying and ending up on someone else's plate. <laughs> like he doesn't like the idea, but uh... well, I mean, it's a... <laughs> tell you what, Alicia is the ultimate closed system. So and mushrooms are all about recycling <laughs> energy and matter, aren't they? So hang, hang on a minute, mushrooms have a speaking network as well. I wonder how close it is to the, how the veil speaks to each other. Atta sort of starts to go, like, look deeply into the, like, the mushroom grounds of the coffee cup that she's just drained. It was the mushrooms about, all along. Think about, like, the way that mushrooms talk to each other and the way that all the veil ghosts seem to be in, like, sync and just, like, mm. stares. Um, well... Yeah, how, and so what what do you suppose? What do you think of um, kind of Algonon's request of uh, somehow you're yeah, potentially kind of drawing Tavarian spirit specifically? Mm. Yeah, seems like a girl. What, what do we think has happened to Tavarian spirit? Because you said that when people die, mm -hmm. a ghost eventually comes out, which then gets. I don't know, destroyed. proton packed. <laughs> but... yeah. Which means that, like, so the, the the difficulty with this request would be that it's already been about two days ish. Mm. Um, I would argue that none of you re would really know how. Well, there is no definitive duration of time that it takes for a spirit to leave a body. Lisa, because there's been relatively few deaths um, since you've been here. Like, it's only really, like, obviously there was lots of death at the beginning, but then the bubble pushed all the ghosts out. Um, but, like, old age deaths are relatively few, far and few between. Um, but it will happen soon. Like, she will release her spirit, mm. um, at which point it will be caught and destroyed before it can kind of escape and wreak mm. havoc. Um, so you kind of need to be quick and also if this horrendous theory that people have turned into mushroom fertilizer is true then like you're also racing against that clock if you're planning on using her body for example as like a focus for any kind of ritual or spell you might <laughs> oh, want to cast no. um, right. you have to yeah, get to her before she's turned into pate so basically we're going today we're doing this today well, but it's going to take some time to set this up Oh. Like you're gonna need, like you don't know what you need. Like Atta, you're not like you have an idea of what you do, but you haven't got like the 
materials or the components or the spells you haven't got the uniform like you'd have to do some you'd ha probably have to do a downtime's worth of acquiring assets hmm. in order to do this job but yeah time hmm. time is slightly against you on that front So it could be a this could be a pseudo a medium term goal. The uh, yes. I guess the other option is we go to where she died, and there might be a connection where she died if we can get mm -hmm. in there because we know where that is. But I I, I don't know which would be better. What uh, Algernon would would your foresight? be more effective if you were somewhere close to where someone had died recently would does it only tell the future or does it give information about the about past? the past it's possible it's arcane substance in nature I, uh... can you get hold of some time I'm sure I can uh, have a word with uh, my supplier in which case as you kind of think that as you have a as you mull over the details and you know that this is going to require some sort of uh, planning uh, it's going to require most likely some purchasable items or you know, acquired uh, assets um, you hear the bookshelf like swing open and there's a there's an uneven footstep that descends down the stairs. Um, and you all look up to see a somewhat disheveled cavern. That's one way to enjoy yourself. Better late than never, old boy. I think cavern inside is feeling a little bit just like, oh god, they're here. Um... <laughs> <laughs> But then he sees the mushroom coffee sitting on the table <laughs> and he wanders over and sits with them um, as being sort of quite silent. As an aside, Nate, uh, you've got a whisper. <gasps> oh, okay. <laughs> I think he's going <laughs> to... <laughs> he's going to grab his coffee and he's going to go would you all do me so kindly as accompanying me upstairs please he's going to be speaking quite he, he has a relatively posh accent anyway but he's going to be speaking very much more studious and a little bit out of character than usual uh, everything alright Catherine if you don't mind and sort of gestures everyone to go upstairs. Uh, do I trust that we're not walking into a trap or something? I don't know, Julia. Do you? <laughs> uh, what could I roll? I don't know. Would survey be anything for that? I don't for know. Things like things like this, you can decide whether you trust or not. <sighs> Catherine's gonna, like... Catherine's gonna see your uh, sort of concerned look yeah. and give you sort of like just like a hard stare like it's serious alright <laughs> and I get up to follow uh, everyone else going? sure I um, put my hand I put my hand on Catherine's shoulder and says oh, your fly's undone and it just <laughs> <laughs> Cavern does himself up. <laughs> <laughs> um, in which case, the the four of you uh, kind of head upstairs, and um, Cavern, you lead everyone out of the spectre, like past past Juicy, and she's kind of giving you a, a confused look as the four of you, like you've just wandered in and then almost mm. immediately wandered out with the rest of them. Um, Throughout this whole, Cavern's just staring, sort of down. He's or staring straight forward. He's not looking at the others sure 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 um and yeah for the rest of you this does seem very kind of odd and out of place uh but cavern leads you outside onto the cobblestone street um he leads you down back under the familiar arch onto the main road 
and as he as you kind of emerge out and look right in the middle of the street is a large yellow scaled dragon scent surrounded by clergy of the children of Aya hmm. wearing kind of clerical armors chain mail um, one of them holds a tome uh, the others have uh, kind of ornamental maces hanging from their belts and the dragon scent woman smiles um, and you recognize it as the smile of a blackmailer of a manipulator uh, of someone who's made someone else do something because they had no choice thank you Cavern, says Dorothea and she looks and kind of intently stares at all of you in turn I understand that you much like Cavern have strayed from the light but in this moment that will work to my benefit. I have a job proposition for you, and I feel you are in no real position to refuse. And with that, we'll call it there. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You're right there, Earl. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what does she want? I think does she want to figure out who's putting people through the bubble again? I forgot which faction. Um, the chain bearers, the sort of merchant people. Right. I don't know why. Maybe I've got a. Maybe she wants to know about that. I don't know. Elsewhere in Elysia, the sound of ragged panting is accompanied by the frenetic pounding of foot on cobblestone. The sound of panic intermingles with the sound of a valuable item slung over a shoulder in a sack. An unseen this hole, pothole in the ground sends the Lorivar woman sprawling to the ground in a painful thud. The cube in the bag spilling out onto the street. And as the woman looks up, her face illuminated by its greenish glow. She tries to get up and winces as she realizes her ankle is sprained, is twisted and sprained. Nevertheless, she stoops down to pick up the cube but stops and she realises she's lost too much crown and as she looks up to the exterior of the veil she is swarmed by vengeful spirits which lift her up her screams blocked out from those inside Congratulations, everyone, mm. on completing episode four. Cameron's got, face got... 
can get two. <laughs> no, it avoided level two harm. So no. there's there's that. That's You're all good. good. You've still got two working eyes. It's, it's fine. You've got another job. You're, you know, they're keeping you busy. <laughs> what is level two harm? Like, how does harm work? Uh, so you have like two level one slots, two level two slots, one level three slot, and then death. So, so yeah. if you get two level twos, then you minus a dice from everything that you do. Uh, it's if you have yeah, if either are filled in, you get minus dice. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. And yeah, if they're both filled up, then and you get a third level two, then it becomes level three, which is like you can't do anything on your right. own. Right. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Big oof. Um. Anyway, but it's fine. It didn't happen. Um. <laughs> And absolutely nothing untoward or unfortunate is going to happen uh, to right. you going forward. Right? It's all fine. Sure. We're still, sure. It, still fe it feels like we're still in the very early stage of the game before we realise just how messed up we are going to have to get. <laughs> <laughs> like, we haven't had harm yet. We haven't had trauma yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to stay but, but that way. we're just on the cusp of doing it. No, yes. no, we're fine. <laughs> we're okay. Okay, okay. Well, um, thank you, you lot for playing. Uh, thank you all for watching and or listening. Um, if you liked it, uh, like this video, make sure to hit the like button and comment down below on... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Comment down below on what you would want someone to fetch from Beyond the Veil if you were a chain bearer. Um, and uh, if you want to find out if you are correct in your assumptions and guesses, uh, then make sure to catch the next episode by subscribing to the Explorers of Elsewhere channel and hitting the bell icon for notifications of new uploads, which happen very regularly. We won't hmm. want you to miss any of them. So, with all that said, Thank you once again for playing. Thank you all again once again for watching and or listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.